record this for anybody who's unable to make it. I know that the, the noon hour doesn't work for everybody's schedule. So we are recording the session and we'll post it later for people who are interested in being able to see it. And um, just want to go through a couple of things. So thanks for being here. Just want to kind of fill you in on up to date information. Most of you, I'm not sure if you've been here for previous sessions or if this is your first one, but we're just going to go through. It is week three of comprehensive distance learning. And so we're just going to go ahead and dive into uh, providing some information that is as up to date as possible. So let me go ahead and dive in. So we are, I'm going to try to minimize this. Um, we are just going to stick to a couple of agreements and norms since we're in a virtual setting. Makes it difficult if um, everybody is not muted. So please remain muted so that everybody can hear and um, unmute yourself at the end when we have time for question and answers. Um, if you'd like to ask something specific. If you have a thing that is related just to your individual student, we uh, have a couple of options. We can either address that at the end of our webinar or you can also type your email address or phone number along with your name and your child's name. And we can um, address, I can reach out to you at another time and talk to you specifically about your, your student. We are going to cover a couple things today. We're going to talk about a few website updates so you can see where things are going to be located and where they are located. We're going to talk about a parent support team that we have created, as well as a parent survey that will be coming out soon. We're going to talk about a couple of changes that you're going to notice starting next week in Canvas. We'll also talk about parent Canvas accounts. Um, just touch briefly on Soft Start next week and then give you an idea of what the October webinars are going to look like. That's our plan for today. I um, want to show you real quick about our website. So um, when you are in your child's Canvas account, you might see a button that looks like this up here that it says parent help. If you click on that, that actually takes you to um, down here on the right, it takes you to this parent resource page. And there are a lot of things that are listed there. I wanted to give you another way to go and find that page if you didn't want to go through Canvas. If you go to the Tillamook School District website and click on this red 2021 return to school information, that's going to pop up this window right here. And then you can click on parent resources and there will be some things there that you're able to access. So I want to show you um, just in case you want to actually see the entire process. So if you go right here, you click on this. And then over here, this parent resource page is a really nice page for you to get information. So if I click on parent resources, then there's a bunch of links here that take you to um, a lot of information. So if we click on Canvas, um, there's a little, just a real brief Canvas 101 video here, and there's one in Spanish right next to it. You can just click on that icon and it'll take you to um, that video. There's also um, some additional information about Canvas, some basics, some guides where you could go for tech support. But then you'll also see, and I'm jumping ahead a teensy bit, but there are Canvas parent observer accounts that have been created. And so here is a lot of information about parent observer accounts. Um, all of these right here that are underlined are links um, to be able to give you access to um, resources that will help you be able to set up your notifications the way that you would like them. I know I've already heard from a couple of parents who have already been receiving emails that uh, would normally go to their student, but now is notifying them in their email um, based on their child's Canvas accounts. And so you can, um, the, these, all of these right here, you can change your Canvas to another language. Um, you, I guess the one I would recommend you take a peek at would be the setting up notifications to make sure that you have um, what you need and you're being notified in a way that works for you. Sometimes you get a lot of notifications, especially if you have multiple children and it can feel a little bit overwhelming. So don't be afraid to click on that and find out how you can pare down your um, notifications. Also wanted to talk about the Canvas parent app. 
So you can get the app on your phone. Um, for most of us, a lot of us, that's a really handy tool. We don't necessarily always have a desktop, but we usually have a phone that's handy and we're able to access things that way. There are directions here for you um, to be able to, um, whatever kind of phone you may have to be able to get directions on how to create that account. I wanna show you one more place that might be helpful for you to go to. There's this parent webinar. Um, so over here in the parent resources, we looked at Canvas. We're working on updating this classroom curriculum. So that page is under construction, uh, but wanted to click on this parent webinar so that you can see a little bit about um, October. We do have dates set for October. There will be a flyer later this afternoon that is here as well that will list um, just kind of what those general topics will, will be. So again, when we started these parent webinars, um, the intention was just to kind of provide like an overview for the month that would be the same from week to week. Um, we're starting to realize that maybe it's more beneficial to create a little bit more specific um, to what we are currently experiencing during that week. So that's why things have changed just a little bit. So this is um, a really nice place for you to go to if you um, are just looking for some information. So again, I'm going to go back to this. There are a couple ways to get there. You can just go straight to the district website, but you can also click on this parent help button within your child's Canvas account and it will go there as well. We have created, so we, we're trying to be very intentional about listening to our parents, listening to our families, and really working hard to make adjustments and create supports for you so that you feel like you um, have all the tools you need because virtual learning is really hard and our teachers are working so, so, so hard to um, make things accessible and usable and um, sometimes despite all our best efforts, there are still some glitches and some things that we got to work out some bugs. Um, and sometimes that's on just like a canvas as a whole. Um, it's not related necessarily to to the teacher and what the teacher is doing. So again, we just are so grateful and appreciative of our teachers and how hard they're working and ways that they are meeting their students and their families needs. We wanted to provide also a parent support team. And so the structure is basically we're going to provide for the next about three weeks. We're going to provide some evening office hours. And so at um, each of the buildings, there will be a person available to assist with things related to Canvas, with things related to um, uh, just the structure of certain classrooms and things of that nature. But if you just need some support with something going on in Canvas that you're struggling with and the daytime doesn't work because you're a working parent and the, those um, hours aren't always, somebody isn't live ready to help you, um, this is going to be a place that you can go to to get some assistance in the evening hours. So I, we will put up um, some information more specifically about what that is going to look like, but I believe it'll start next week and we'll try to do a Monday, Wednesday for about an hour from about 7 to 8 p.m. So um, that's what I know right now. We will make sure that we post that information and if it changes by an hour or half an hour, we'll let you know. Um, but again, just want to kind of, that's, that's what we've been, that's in the works and um, it'll be ready for you next week. You'll have a number to call, you'll have a person. Um, and here is listed who those people will be at each building um, and they will be able to provide you building specific support. So. The other thing we're noticing is that there are some, um, there's some differences, and I know I've mentioned this before, between elementary and secondary, just in terms of needs and the way things are structured. So I do know that the elementary um, teachers will be able to, these three listed right here, Ariel, Hannah, and Normandy, will be able to address some, some similarities from building to building, but they're really going to be kind of designated to help students and families within their particular building. Um, and then the junior high and high school as well. You can see the people listed there also. So the other thing that's going to be really nice is, again, there are a number of things that we know are just new um, and brand new for our families. So they're gonna do these recorded kind of Q&A sessions. Um, so each evening when they do their office hours, if it's seven to eight o'clock at night, um, they're actually going to record those Q&A sessions so that they can make sure that they're addressing the parent needs in a way that is helpful. 
and can create tutorials based on the questions that they're getting and the um, and the needs that they're addressing in the office hours because we know that there's probably other people out there who have similar questions and we want to make sure that we provide tutorials that are specific to buildings and levels and that are really meeting the needs of our families. Just as a reminder, if you do have questions, please plop them in the chat. I will get to them at the very end and, and address those when we're finished going through all this information. So um, we're also gonna do a parent survey. We really would like your help in identifying what supports and assistance uh, we can provide for you. So um, this is just an example, but it will be sent out. But I just wanted you to be aware that we are, um, we know that there's been a number of new things over the last week or so that have um, cropped up that it might feel a little bit sometimes like a tidal wave. And so if we can kind of break this down into smaller chunks, um, we do again have that parent support team that's going to be making tutorials related to these particular um, topics. And we're gonna create a space on that parent resource page on our website um, that will kind of house all of these tutorials. And they're gonna be real short, like no more than five minutes. So if you need um, to know a little bit more about Epic Books and what it does and how great it is, then you can watch a short little tutorial on Epic Books and it'll give you a little bit of information on why this is beneficial to your student and if it's something that um, you need a little more directions on. Or Google Docs and understand that Google Docs has a whole, um, just a number of things related in that particular topic. But again, we, we want to hear from you. What are What is your student struggling with related to this particular thing? And what do you need more help in supporting your child with? There's also going to be on this survey how you would like this information. So we are doing Q&A sessions um, in the evenings. We also are doing these live webinars like what I'm doing right now. We're also creating those video tutorials, but we can also create um, how-to documents in the written form um, for those of you who can't necessarily attend or don't or would prefer just to um, read something and kind of figure it out that way. And um, again, we're going to have some resources posted on our website as well. But there will also be on the end of the survey, you know, what other ways can we support you? So I'm sure there are things we have not thought about. And um, we would love to hear what can we do to support you and what can we do um, to help you feel like you have all the tools you need to navigate this virtual platform as well as your students too. Uh, you are going to see starting next week some changes in Canvas. So again, we are listening really intently uh, to our families and trying to make things as user friendly as possible. Um, and we know that some of that just means that there needs to be some um, consistency and some just navigational um, restructuring to make things more usable on your end. And so you are going to see that there will be a toolbar that is um, similar across K-12 that's going to have a home button, announcements, and modules. So you might see things that are hidden that you maybe saw before. Um, we felt like kind of paring down what options are over there for students would make life uh, a little bit easier. And we're also going to start organizing our modules K-6, and I think this is K-12, um, in this format here. So you can see that it's going to be chronological and it'll start with a module that'll have important information. And so in there, you'll find things like passwords, you'll find things like um, just things that you need for that particular course. At the secondary level, it might have a syllabus included in it. It might have office hours. There will be things related to your child's particular course that will really make, um, I think, it easier in terms of not having to go through modules week by week to try to find where that information was, but it'll just all be housed in one module um, at the very top of your child's Canvas. Once they click into their modules, that'll be the first one that they see. And then it'll go week by week in chronological order. And part of that is for ease of navigation and for alignment. And we know that sometimes it's nice to be able to see the current week at the top of your child's modules, but it, it really gets confusing when you're navigating across using the next button. Um, you can, if, if it's not chronological, you'll find that you might be in a previous week that you didn't intend to be in. 
And then you'll also see in K6 that each module will be organized with two choices. And again, just to make life a little bit easier and a little bit um, more simple to navigate, you're going to see that there's learning tools for the week and then you're going to see a weekly to do. And what this might look like is something similar to this. So this was that task bar that I was talking about that'll just say home modules will have announcements included on here. Um, we're working on syncing Remind and Canvas together. So I'm not sure you're going to see this button right here, but you'll see those three listed. And then you're going to see things organized where important information is at the top. And then you're going to see week one, week two, and then you're going to move into whatever the current week is will be at the bottom. This is week three. And again, you're going to see kind of helpful information and then the weekly to do as well underneath that. And just as a reminder to kind of clean up your page because it can start to look like a lot the more weeks we go through this. Um, if you click on this little arrow that's right here next to the title of the week, you can just hide and minimize um, all the other information. So this is just a screenshot, but if I clicked on this in a live Canvas page, then these two boxes would be hidden. You're also going to see something, <coughs> excuse me, that's similar to this. And we're on the left hand side for elementary students, you're going to have all the content areas listed on the left. And then across the top, you're going to have a day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Um, I know for some it helps to have it be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but not everybody is doing their daily work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some are doing it on Saturday, Sunday, Friday. Um, and so just being kind of flexible, but dividing it up if we were going to do these day by day, this is what how you might structure your day, uh, which is helpful, I think, for elementary students. And so you'll see some sort of grid similar to that in your child's Canvas account, which will make um, navigation a little bit easier. And then you'll also see an announcements button and this announcement um, is where I know we're sending things out via Remind. I know they're coming through email, but we wanted to have them in one place in Canvas as well. And so announcements is where those announcements will live kind of from week to week. One of the things that this will help with is for families who have students that are not with the same parent or the same caregiver from day to day. Um, as they move from, from house to house or caregiver to caregiver, um, if there are certain things related to that particular course or that week, um, that caregiver on any given day can click on announcements and be able to see something that may be related to that particular child in that particular class. Right now, one of the things that I do is I have to, when I get notifications and announcements from my children's teacher is that I forward it on to the person who has them during the day. And it'd be nice if um, she could just click on announcements and be able to see it there. You are going to see similar changes in Canvas 712. You're going to see the same home button, announcement button, and modules. You'll also see the same organization chronologically within those modules. Um, and just as a reminder, um, I believe that the secondary 712 folks are doing two assignments per week and assessment every other week. Um, Acellus is, is different. The courses that are using Acellus, that's kind of an ongoing rolling um, curriculum. What you won't see here because it, each course is divided into a separate content area, you're not going to see that weekly at a glance necessarily and they're kind of all divided out by content anyways. So I want to take a minute and talk about parent Canvas accounts. These have been set up for you. I understand there's a lot of text on here um, and we have posted some information about Canvas accounts, but this goes through your um, parent view. And so you do have a parent view when you register your kids for school, you set up a parent view account and um, you will then go and access our Canvas site. And then you will use your parent view account with just a TI for Tillamook and this underscore so this is mine right here. And so when I put that in to log in, then it gives me a chance to put in my password. And the first thing you have to do is just change your password. Once you change it, then you click on, um, you go back to log in and you're ready to go. So there's some notification that came out like this, as well as all of these step one, step two, this was also information that was sent out. 
Um, and I know that this district canvas information page, which I, I showed you earlier, has more, I'll click on it for you, has more information when you scroll down, more information on Canvas parent observer accounts. If you need your parent view, please, um, if, you, if you can't remember what that, that initial, um, like mine is Rose K, so if I go back here, mine is Rose K. So if you don't know what this part is, um, you can contact Chrissy Weber or you can call or you can um, email tech.help at psd9k12.org. You can also call the high school number and enter this extension. I know I'm going kind of fast, I promise to get to some questions at the end. We are doing um, an October 5th soft start. Um, so starting next week, we will have a uh, small numbers of students in our buildings that um, are kind of our first wave of students that we're bringing in to give some focus attention to. Um, and a notification went out to families that, of students that are involved in that. And we're hoping like that we've created some, some safety measures and how that will look and what that looks like. And that's all per um, Oregon Department of Education guidance and um, that this is allowable. And so then we'll start to, um, if, if possible, we'll grow that as necessary um, just for those students that need a little intensive support. October webinar. So again, we're going to change structure just a little bit. Um, you will, we will have two uh, week in the middle of the day on Wednesday from noon to one. We'll do that on the 7th and the 28th. And then we'll also have it on Thursday, October 15th from six to seven. Um, these will all be posted on our website. And I showed you um, where that was, where they were posted. I can go back to that again in a second. Uh, one of the things that we were finding is that our families were really struggling with accessing our Zoom link. Um, I know you signed up to be able to attend the September parent webinar. Um, there was a way to sign up to do that, which worked really well, except for um, when you didn't get notification of the Zoom link. So this makes me a little nervous because I don't want people who are not part of our district to enter our Zoom link, but we're going to do everything we can with our waiting room to make sure that we um, just have our parents in there. So we just want to make sure that we stay connected, that we continue to communicate. Um, we're going to just adjust our topics and develop them based on your feedback. Um, we just want to focus on continuing to grow our understanding of virtual learning, the resources, the strategies, the tools, things that come up that we really feel are important for you to know. Um, we're going to share those kind of like what I'm doing this morning um, or this afternoon with, um, with today's parent webinar. That is all I have for the time being. I'm happy to go back and walk you through Canvas if you uh, want to see something live that I can go back and show you. Um, I know it was a quick little overview today, uh, but just wanted to make you as aware as possible of the things that are happening around the district. So again, I know a lot of information um, and I know that it was quick. And so I apologize for the speediness, but I also know that we've got a range of, of people who've been here before and people who are new to us. So um, I'm going to click on the chat. Again, if you have questions, this would be a great time for us to dive into some Q&A. And I'll open the chat and start to answer questions as best I can. I am, there is a question in here that I would like to address kind of with everybody because it has to do with if there's no, if we've hidden the assignment tab in Canvas, how do you print out those assignments? Um, so the best way to do that is going to be with that grid that I showed you um, for students who really like to kind of check things off to be able to, if, you, if you're somebody who wants to print things, um, that would be a really great thing to print and then it serves as like a to-do list and a checklist. Um, the assignment tab we were finding got really confusing because there were assignments embedded in modules that then would take students out to assignments and it just got real, it's like you could get kind of lost in this labyrinth of Canvas. And so um, I think you can still track what assignments are done and I'm hoping that, I'm just going to share my screen with you real quick one more time. I'm hoping that this right here is going to kind of solve that problem. So again, if I was in this, this particular classroom, I'd be able to print this out and I'd be able to say to my children every day, did you do this? Did you do that? Um, we are still, so 
one thing please know we recognize that there are still some challenges this doesn't solve all of every parent's concern we know that um the and there are some that are still like how do you know if something's submitted how do you know if it's not um that they're not doing it multiple times there are still some things that we have to kind of work out and massage and figure out because canvas has a lot of really great tools um, but sometimes the tools can be too much and so we know that there still needs to be some notification on the students end and on the parents end when kids submit assignments we know that that's still tricky and hasn't been fully lined out and i just say that to say like we we are still working. We can't just kind of overhaul an entire system. Like even the changes that we've made have, I mean, our teachers have put a lot of time and effort into their courses. And so um, I know that they come with a little bit of growing pains on kind of all of our, all, all sides. And so we tried to, to pick the things that would make uh, alignment for parents happen from building to building as um, usable and user-friendly as possible and create some tools that will make life easier on your end because we know it's we know it's hard anybody have any other questions that i can answer you're welcome to unmute yourself and and share or ask lauren you want to go for it and then ray i don't know if you're just giving me a thumbs up or if you have a question too so i'll let you go after lauren goes and then you can i don't know if you're just saying yeah or if you want to Talk. So you're next, Dr. Warren. Hi, Kara. Hi. Thank, thanks for doing these for us parents. We're so, so grateful. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so um, my current concern, we're sure getting this. It's sure getting easier and easier each week. Um, but we have a five-day vacation coming up. Mm -hmm. And we have two children that are in the mentor hunting program. So they will be hunting deer this year. So um, I notified our teachers. I've heard responses back from a couple. We don't want to get behind, mm -hmm. um, but we won't be, ha we won't. So I'm wondering if there is a plan in place. So we don't get behind, but it's gonna be challenging to get caught up or we'll, I don't know, Kara, if you guys have addressed things like this yet. Yeah, you know, that's something that actually did come up and we all went, oh, like that, yeah, what, what are we going to do? I mean, for some, for most, the week to week is going to, like we posted on Friday, that's going to solve a lot of the families that go on vacation, right, or go hunting or something. And they're going to at least be able to access it on Saturday. And then when they get back, they'll be able to do the following week. So I think it's really going to be like on an individual basis. So we tried to create weeks at a time and we're going to continue to do that structure um i think and i know you said you reached out to teachers i do think that that's kind of step one and letting them know like hey we're we're not going to not going to be here i think for attendance purposes also like letting the school know like we're going to be gone for this week we're not going to be if you're totally out of internet commission then you're going to need to let them know you're not going to be checking in for attendance but it's almost like a pre-arranged right. absence is kind of what i think of and trying to get as okay. work that they some teachers already have um, you know, modules built for weeks in advance. Some don't, and it just kind of depends on personal preference, but some of them can give you access to those things ahead of time before they make it kind of public on a Friday afternoon. So I really would okay. say like the, the best thing would be communicating with the school, letting them know you're going to be absent, kind of like prearranged, and then kind of working that out individually with your particular teachers. Only to okay. say they're the ones that are building that week to week. And so I don't know that we necessarily have like an actual, like, what do we do if, like, I, I, we can certainly make one, but I don't think we have like a prearranged absence for distance learning. <laughs> I think, okay. you know what I mean? They said they can also extend deadlines, which I was so grateful for because we just kind of have a really strange circumstance coming up. Yeah, so. yeah we, the, the thing about the deadlines is like, and this is not something I tell my own children because I want them to do their work the week that it's due, but there is some flexibility in when, like we can take work from week one we can take work from week two there is flexibility in those deadlines and so if a student turns in work late late it's still accepted and so um okay yeah again i don't like 
publicize that as a parent for my own kids because otherwise they're not gonna, you know, they'll be like, oh, it's right. fine. I'll do it next week. I'm like, nope, nope, we're gonna do it right now. <laughs> Does that help? Right. Thank you, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, good. Anybody else have any other questions? I think Ray left, so I think he was just giving me a thumbs up. Yep, go for it, Lauren. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask one more then. I don't wanna be selfish with your time. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I had a student today who, uh, he ended up getting in week two assignments. Well, we had completed those, but we were confused for probably 20 minutes why this assignment is reoccurring. Mm -hmm. So I backed him out of it and I said, well, I'm not sure where you're at in your module. So I backed him all the way out to say, hey, buddy, you're not in week three. I am wondering, can, and I don't know, maybe you already addressed this, but can week one and week two disappear if they have submitted everything that was asked of them. Well, that goes back to that same question you just asked about work. It can't because there's kind of this open ability to go back and turn in work from previous weeks. So, you know, our equity, okay. our equity okay. requirements say we have to keep that open. And I, okay. I, I do wonder, Lauren, if the, if organizing, and I don't know, cause I'm not sure which student in which, like the order of the modules in which you're talking about, but I do think that when we have the chronological order, it's going to keep students from ending up in a module they shouldn't be in. I, that's, okay. That's kind of the purpose. It's going to help. In organizing them that way. So like if they're using that next button and going through, it's not going to push them into week two, unless they click in week two to start with. Do you know what I mean? Like if they're in the wrong week from the beginning, then they that's a different issue. But I don't think we're going to have the same where they're going back through previous weeks. But I will also say too, related to that same question, um, we're gonna, the other thing I didn't talk about, but we're gonna start titling our assignments by week. So that if you're just walking by one of your students and you see week three, assignment one, then you know they're in the right week. If you see week one, assignment, you know, whatever, then, you're, then you can just see it and be like, wait a minute, that's from, didn't you already do that? So. That's one way that we're trying to address that too, is just being able to title things within a module for whatever that module is, so that it looks Good. cleaner when students submit things. It also looks cleaner on the teacher side for when students are submitting things, and it looks better in Canvas as a whole. So just as they're kind of progressing through. So I think that that's gonna help. Like those are just kind of system things that I don't think we realize until we were like, People are in wrong places, and this is one easy way to kind of make sure they're all in one place. So I think that'll help that too. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna, let's see. Yeah, so um, we talked about, so here's the question, is it possible to have the weeks listed current week first and then in descending list? So um, we, we chose to do them chronologically for the reason that I just mentioned with Lauren in that we found that some students and parents were getting, they were accidentally ending up in a module that they didn't wanna be in because they were just progressing with the next button and ended up in assignments, doing assignments from a previous week because Canvas is built to go chronologically, which then means it will like, naturally continue you it'll stop you when you get to the end of of your modules but if you're if you start with week three and then you go week two and then week one it's only going to stop you after you get done with week one whereas if you do week one and two and you start in week three it'll stop you at the end of week three i hope i'm doing a good job of explaining that it just it's like built to go chronological and so we understand for a lot of students, it makes the most sense to have the most current at the top. It creates other issues within Canvas if we don't do it chronologically. So I, under, I completely understand it would be nice for my own kids to be able to see first thing what they need to complete. Um, but on the other system side of Canvas, it makes more sense to do it chronologically. Hope I answered that question. And I know we've talked, we went back and forth, back and forth on 
and we felt like this one just made a little bit like there's a little bit higher pros to keeping them chronological than the other one but there's i understand why we've gone back and forth because they both make sense it's just when students can get so lost in canvas we had to kind of try to make it at least a little easier hope that answered your question I'll just continue to wait. If you guys have other questions, you can put them in the chat. You can unmute yourself. You can raise your hand. I think there's a way to raise your hand in Zoom. <laughs> Mike can unmute you if you want. Trying to count in my head. Yeah, Lauren, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so Kara, another parent concern I've had is how much effort my children are putting forth in their work. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I are assisting them when they need help, um, but we want that their level of work is age appropriate and they're doing within their ability and what they've been taught thus far. Mm -hmm. So am I to get on parent view because it shows points for everything that they're completing and doing and it doesn't always say approved or we get the green check or it doesn't always say how much they get on a quiz or, or so forth so do I need to be getting in on the one-on-one -on -one with my child to say hey you know I, I'm just curious how my child is doing, putting forth effort, writing enough sentences, um, or you know what I mean? It, it's just kind of, I'm just uncertain on if we're at where we should be or how to find out how they're doing. I know we just begun, so. Yeah, no, and I think that your question is, is valid and I think we're all trying to figure out what's the best way to provide that feedback in Canvas. And so again, Canvas has a number of tools which are really helpful and also sometimes really overwhelming. And so there are ways of like, you get to cross off your to-do list or it gets a check next to it. Like there are like little things like that, that tools that we can set up, but there's also some feedback that we can provide students as well. And I think, I think at this point, teachers are getting familiar with what all those ways are. And it's gonna start like, as we're now moving into, this is week three, Week one was really like, let's just get familiar with Canvas. Week two was just kind of like, let's let's now actually start doing some learning. Like, I think we're gonna start seeing more feedback as we get further along because we are having, like now we actually have some meat to provide some feedback on, right? Like now we're starting to see, are there patterns? Are there, like, is this student really forget, progressing where they should be? Or are they, and what's the reason behind it? I think you're gonna see more of that coming as we get into more of the meat of what students are, are learning. I think that that will come and you'll start to hear that um, more regularly. I don't, I don't think, I don't know that hopping on the Google Meet is necessarily the best place to do that, but I think you could message or you could have your, mess, your child message their teacher through Canvas to say, hey, am I like, is there something I should be working on? Like, how am I doing? What, I think that messaging system will become more natural also. And so you'll start to okay. get more feedback. I think you'll start to see that more. I think right now it's just, we haven't, I know it's week three, but it's really only week one and a half. And so as teachers are building next, right. but also looking back on how students did, I think we're kind of in that like, that middle ground where you'll start to have some answers here in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. A mother gets a little frightened when an assignment is worth 10 points and it's a compare and contrast. And I just not sure there's enough sentences. So I, I know what you mean too. I was like, I read something my daughter wrote and I was like, um, you're gonna you need to find a friend and you need to we need to work on that. So it's kind of this like, but they have all week to do it. So that's where like the feedback's kind of different too, because it's kind of coming like a, it, it just rolls differently than like that daily feedback that students get and you get as a parent, right? It's it's rolling now like a week at a, in advance or a week behind, I guess. And so I think that that, I think you'll start to get some feedback on, oh, let's write a few more sentences. And I do know if you have a secondary student that you'll get that feedback from their grades in synergy. So you'll start to see 
that. And I know um, in talking with many of our secondary teachers that that's something that they're they're trying to make sure parents understand that that how the the grades roll that weekend at a time. And so it just looks those things are like just a little uncomfortable, I think, because they're different than how we how normal school works, right? Like building things a week at a time is different than day to day. So I think that's just going right. to be a little bit that gets kind of kind of softened and figured out as we go through here. Anybody have any other questions? Don't be shy. I'm counting to 10 in my head. <laughs> Okay, well, yes, the Canvas app is live now, Julie, through Parent View. So again, you only use the Parent View as part of your login. So one of the things that uh, you'll have to go to, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, hold on, just a second. So when you get into Where's my parent view slide? Okay, so again, there's a lot on this slide and I apologize. Um, when you, this is where you have to go. So all you need your parent view for is this little, this section of what your Canvas account will be. So like mine is Rhodes K to get into parent view. I just needed to add this TI and the underscore. That's just what I used. That's what, what the, Kind of on the back end of tech kind of it, it coordinated this um it like populated it for you and so then when you go to this tillamook sd.instructure.com and i think this I, I hope this went out i hope you received it i know it came on facebook um but it, this has the website there i can i'm gonna um copy it and put it in our chat also and is it still there? Oh, I didn't, hold on, sorry. Okay, so that's the website that you'll go to. If you have a, um, it ju this just happened yesterday, just so that everybody's aware. I'm gonna get out of the screen so I can see you again, hold on. This just happened yesterday, um, so in you don't have to do it through parent view you just use you go to this website right here and then you just use your parent view id with a with a t i underscore in front of it and so again my parent view is Rhodes k so i would go to this website the one that's the https tillamooksd.instructure.com that login canvas um, i can show you guys want me to show you what it would look like let me show you And to answer your question, when did it get announced? It just happened yesterday. Um, and I know it went out on Facebook. I'm not sure exactly when, um, but it all, it just kind of naturally, like when we hit the button to go, then it populates those. And so um, I think, Melinda, I think that's you. If it's you and you have a school district Canvas account too, um, you will have to use a separate browser. So if you can see here, like I'm in Google Chrome right now, but I'm going to go and use this one and then it'll actually allow me to, oops, it'll allow me. So I'm going to go to that website and hit enter. And then when it first comes up, I mean, obviously none of this will be here when you first come up, but um, you'll put in your parent view here in your login with that TI underscore in front of it. And then the first thing you have to do is just say, forgot my password. And so it'll send you a new password and you'll put that in. Then once you log in, you'll have like, you can see, this is what's cool if you have lots of kids. I have three. And so what's cool is I can see announcements from East at the top. Then I see announcements from South Prairie and a counselor check-in. And then um, greetings more from South Prairie, just so people can see live um, all the students can see. So I can see all these notifications. So one of the things I was telling you, if you don't want to see it like this, you can manage your notifications. 
But then down here, what's really cool is I have my second grader, my third grader, my fifth grader, and then I also have PE at East and I have PE at South Prairie. And so I can actually go into any of their courses and see, like I can click on my daughters here and I can go in and I see it now from a parent view. And um, so I can go in and see what she's supposed to do for the week. Again, I told you, you can like, if you wanna minimize these things to make it easier to see, you can do that. So this is what she's supposed to be working on this week. So I could go in and I could look at it and tell her, it looks really, really similar to how it looks when you're, um, to how it looks if you're in your student's account. Um, but anyway, it gives you access to kind of what they see. You can't submit anything, but you can at least um, see all your kids' accounts in one place. So it's kind of a slick thing for people trying to manage multiple kids. So I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It's great. And it is, I mean, it's one of those that you could have gone in and created your own account, but you have to get a pairing code from each of your kids' accounts and merge them to your own. I, it was a lot. So um, I think maybe what would be helpful since, um, again, I think this is Melinda, but whoever is saying how to do this, I think I might make a little video and post it so people can see kind of a easy way to do it. it might be helpful. Yay, it is you. Okay, good. Well, um, anyway, make sure you use a separate browser, Melinda, and not the one that you're, if you have another Canvas account. And if you'd love to, if you'd like to do a video, I would not be sad. Send it to me when you're done. That would be awesome. Those parent review accounts are really, really great. So I think that people are going to be really happy with them. It all just, again, came out, and I'm not sure we've done, I need to send a message to our staff, and I also, we should probably send another thing out to our families too. So any other questions? Good idea. Good idea, Melinda. We'll make a video. You let me know when you're, if you need any help. All right, well, I am just really appreciative of you guys being here, and I know it looks like a lot of familiar names. I can't see your faces except for Lauren. Um, so I appreciate you guys being here. We are know that we're doing our best to communicate. I know we're not always getting all the things out in the most timely fashion, and I know that it feels like a tidal wave for everybody. Um, please give your teachers of your students a virtual hug of some sort because they're working their tails off. And I know this is the week where they feel really stressed and really tired. So um, just know we appreciate you as parents and families and our teachers are working hard and we're so appreciative of them. And um, this is a learning experience uh, for all of us. <laughs> and we are do doing the best we can with our families and our students in mind. So grateful for all of you. Send me an email if you have any questions that I didn't answer or if you have an individual student um, situation that you'd like me to address, I'd be happy to do that. So, all right, I'm gonna end this meeting and sign off and uh, maybe I'll see you in October. Take care. <laughs>